Hey, good morning, YouTube. Florida Stacker back here with you, and I've got some nice gold laid out here on the table. Let's talk about the gold market this morning. Let's show you a couple new gold pickups when we return. Hey, everybody, once more, Florida Stacker back here with you. Thank you for joining me today. So we are still in a bull market. I know that is really hard to understand, but once more, when in doubt, just zoom out. And of course, I am referring to the charts. When you take a look at the gold and silver charts, but in today's video, we'll focus on gold. You can see the last three years have actually been pretty nice for gold. Of course, the bull market did start in 2019. We saw a really healthy run up in the value of gold, reaching an all time high of a little over $2,000 uh, in the fall of 2020. Now, since that time, namely since the election, there's been a lot more emphasis on stocks and cryptocurrencies amongst uh, institutional investors, uh, billionaires, millionaires, and those with uh, you know big accounts that can really influence the price of an asset. So a lot of pressure right now against gold, but I want you to keep in mind that bull markets do have corrections. And when it comes to gold and silver, but especially gold, things do move slowly. So I want you to keep the faith. I want you to remember that as you convert your dollars, your yen, your pounds, your uh, Australian dollars, wherever you're from into gold, you are actually locking in value, value that has been around for thousands of years. And uh, no need to worry about the day to day, week to week, because when you look at it from a more macroeconomic perspective, things are looking really good. So let's take a look at this brand new Britannia here. And I have been wanting this coin for quite some time. This is a 2020. And this coin, of course, carries all the new security features that the Royal Mint in Great Britain has uh, very, how should I say, uh, meticulously and precisely added to this coin. Really, really cool. You can see there's a little shield down here in the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, that shield has a trident in it. There's some engraving around the coin's edge. You've got the wavy ocean background. And here, let me go ahead and try to block the light out a little bit. You see that? See how when the light changes and you get a little bit more of a shade? The coin itself, it's kind of like a uh, refractor. It kind of reminds me of going back to being a kid when you would open up those uh, packs of baseball cards and you'd get those uh, refractor cards in there, right? You know, the uh, special ones, they weren't usually worth that much money, at least not when I was collecting. Um, but they were pretty neat to be able to see uh, the color change on the uniform of the player, etc. So I did throw it in a capsule here. And once more, for those of you that uh, don't know how to capsule your coins, especially your gold coins, the Britannia fits into the same capsule as the American Gold Eagle or the American Gold Buffalo, uh, as well as the South African Krugerrand um, and a couple of other coins uh, out there, uh, right about 32 millimeters in diameter. So this is a direct fit capsule that I picked up off eBay. If you're curious about uh, finding these exact capsules, I do have a link to the uh, the eBay company that I shop from. I have no affiliation with them. I don't know who they are. I just buy capsules from them. So, um, you know, anyways, if you're interested in picking those up, they're down in the video description section. So let's go ahead and flip it around to the queen side. Here, of course, you have Queen Elizabeth II. And I did get a pretty good coin. I don't see any gouges, nicks, any uh, abrasions or anything here on the coin, which is good because as we know, the quality from the Royal Mint um, can be, well, not quality. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. It's not quite like the next coin I'm about to show you right now. So there she is, the 2021 Gold Britannia in all her glory. Beautiful gold coin. So the next gold coin that I did pick up recently is the 2021 Australian Kangaroo from the Perth Mint. And this coin and coins that do come from the Perth Mint, uh, they do tend to come at a pretty good premium like the Britannia's. Uh, right now, this particular coin is about $100 cheaper than an American Gold Eagle and maybe even a little more cheaper than that than an American Gold Buffalo. Uh, and it's a very, very nice coin. It comes in this capsule, so I didn't have to put it into a capsule. Uh, these coins are a little bit less in diameter and a little bit more thick than the American Gold Buffaloes, American Gold Eagles, Britannias, um, kind of like the Canadian Maple Leaf in a way, the Canadian Maple Leaf being more thick. 
Uh, you do have a reeded edge, like most coins, except for the Philharmonic, of course. And then here you go. Queen Elizabeth again. This is the Australian coin, of course. Elizabeth II, Australia, $100, backed by the government of Australia. Now, this is also a very, very nice gold coin with uh, some more subtle, uh, kind of like a satin gold background. And then, of course, you've got the more polished Australian kangaroo there standing in front of, uh, I don't even know what kind of plant or flowers those are. I didn't actually take the time to research it, but uh, some type of poppy, maybe. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Um, but a beautiful coin nonetheless. You got the P right there for the Perth Mint. And so now let's go ahead and grab them both and get them close together. And I'll just stop talking for a second, let you get a view. Beautiful coins. All right. So let's step into an article now. Let's talk about this bull run, a little bit more about the bull run, and uh, show you a little more of these coins. So this article, The Gold and Silver Bull Market is Not Over, written by Don Durrett earlier this week. Uh, in summary, this is going to cover the drivers that will push gold and silver prices higher. I uh, want to make an important note that this is actually the third gold and silver bull market since 1970. And the author states it will likely be the most lucrative. And technically speaking, both gold and silver are set up to make big market runs. Once each of them breaks the ceiling with gold of $2,000 and silver of $30 respectfully. So the bad news is, is that gold is currently trapped and silver does tend to follow gold. Gold has been trapped since the November election. Gold likely can't break out until the risk on trade flips. Investors talk about the importance of the DXY or the dollar index. I talk about that a lot here on this channel, as well as negative real interest rates, and these do impact the price of gold. But the only true factor that does determine bull markets is the fear trade, and the fear trade shows itself only one way right now, which is called a risk-off trade. Now, since the November election, we have been in a risk on trade where investors do prefer stocks over gold and silver currently. We're talking big money here, guys and girls. What this means is that investors are bullish on stocks and they currently lack fear of a correction. Thus, their sentiment is very high for risky stocks and currently very low for gold. They are buying stocks that have been trending that in cryptocurrencies. We're talking more lucrative and more risky plays here, right? Trying to earn capital. Uh, they're buying these stocks, and these stocks, of course, have been trending, a lot of news, uh, the Reddit uh, stuff, of course, plus just a lot of uh, you know discussion around the election on green energy and some of the other um, industries like cannabis and, and on and on. They're, they've been very hot lately and a lot of discussion and a lot of investment around it. Um, so since the small correction in October, the S&P 500 has done nothing except trend higher. Uh, the state of affairs has left gold stuck, and it can't get a bid. In fact, it won't get a bid from big money until this strong risk on trade flips to risk off. Sure, it can rise on the margins, but it won't make a run to 2000 until a risk off trade is trending. As a gold and silver investor, I don't care about $1,800 gold or even $1,900 gold. I really want to get it above 2000 and make that run to another all-time high, which I expect to get taken out. That is my first target. My second target is $2,500 and then finally $3,000. Everything above this is gravy. If we do get to 3,000 gold, then the miners should fly, which is another reason I'm invested in the miners. That is the trade I am positioned for. So yes, I am talking my book. I have skin in the game. Okay, once more, these are comments from the author and not my own. While both the gold and silver charts are still very strong, that doesn't mean they can't fall lower. For gold, we have to fall all the way to 1472 to reach the 200-day moving average. The bad news is, is that we actually might just do that. Once the stock market finally corrects, and it will, it will likely take everything down, including gold, silver, and the miners temporarily. Once 1800 is taken out, gold has lost its support. Now it is a dangling down below 1700. And to think of a close below 1684 scares me. I think we have to assume that it is going lower. All we can do is wait for the stock market to correct and once more enter the risk on trade. The last time we had a risk off trade was last summer when gold was trending. The same thing could repeat this summer, although that is only a possibility 
And this goes on and on to talk about we need to wait for that stock market correction. All right. The author does feel that gold will begin to rise this year, um, but he is expecting that to happen after the next correction. So what are your thoughts on that? I uh, personally, I see the headwinds against gold right now. And uh, those being, of course, the safe place in the bond market, right? A lot of big money wants to move into bonds and treasuries to earn those guaranteed yields. And they don't want to um, lock up all their money in gold at this time because they've seen all the negative pressure on gold. And, well, perception sometimes is reality, even if we know as stackers that follow the market much more closely than millionaires or billionaires just trying to move money in and out of assets, whether out at the golf course or hanging out on the yacht, um, but for those of us that keep our nose to the ground and they're constantly watching it, um, we see what's going on. We do see that we're still in a bull market. Um, if you look back, remember, when in doubt, just zoom out. Look at the chart. Go all the way back. Go back seven years, five years, three years, and it'll make you feel a lot more comfortable with where we're at today with gold and silver. So curious to know what your thoughts are on the article above the bull market. We still have more to go, but of course, the author is expecting another correction I'd be curious to see if gold will test those all-time highs this year, and uh, definitely a real curious to see if we can get silver over that $30 hump. Thanks, everyone. I really appreciate you tuning in. Please have a wonderful Monday morning, and we'll see you soon on another Precious Metals-focused stacking video.